Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert, back with another gear review. This time, a rack unit of beauty in the form of the Tascam ML32D. Now there is also an ML16D, 16 channels of conversion, but we have the ML32D which is 32 channels of conversion from line level into Dante. Now, Dante is one of those protocols that up until recently, I've had no real need to dabble in, but it's one of those things that ignore it at your peril. Audio over IP is coming. In fact, it's here. It's all around us already. So it's one of those things we need to learn. So I thought I'd dive in and get my hands dirty with the ML32D, and I'm running it into the Focusrite RED 16. I will talk about the setup and how things have been configured and all that sort of stuff shortly. But for now, let's get up close and personal around the front and around the back on the Tascam ML32D. So around the front, it's a pretty simple beast. We have the obligatory power button. We then have four LEDs, a status LED, which gives us some indications of what's going on with the unit. We then have our sample indicator. I'm running at 48K, but the unit will run up to 96K. Then we have our 32 channels of indication. We have a signal and an overload for the input and a signal for the output. So I can already hear you asking, why does anyone need 32 channels of line I.O.? Well, behind me, I have my rather beautiful Audion ASP8024 24-channel console, which gives me the option to run the eight buses as inputs. So actually, I need 32 channels of line I.O. Now, usually I'm recording through my Orion 32HD, which gives me 32 channels of line I.O. over D-sub, as does the ML. 32D. So all I have to do is pull the D subs from the antelope and whack them down into the Tascam. Very, very handy indeed. Now there are three main types of signal running this rig. There's the analog connectivity between the console and the IO of the Tascam ML32D. We then have the Dante connection on a standard network cable, in this case a Cat5e, which is running between one of the ports on the ML32 into one of the Dante ports on the RED16 line. The RED16 line is then connected to my MacBook Pro via two connections. First, Thunderbolt 3. This is our main primary I.O. connectivity. It's the way the computer is talking to the RED16 line. It's also how Pro Tools is configured to see the RED16 line. It thinks it's a Thunderbolt interface. The other connection is the Dante connection. Now, there's no audio actually traveling over this particular pipe at this time. We're using the Dante connection purely to configure the Dante network. And we do that in the Dante controller, which is a free app available from Ordinate. So you can see here, I've routed everything one to one, all the way across the network, ins to outs, outs to ins between the RED16 line and the ML32. Very, very straightforward. Now, the other thing we have to worry about is in Focusrite control. Now, this is how we tell the RED16 where the inputs are coming from. Now, if you, like me, also run an HD system, an HDX system, you will have forgotten the golden rule that non-HD Pro Tools only records up to 32 channels, thus making this side of things completely redundant. All we have to do is make sure we configure the first 32 channels, or in this case, the first 30 channels, because I'm using 31 and 32 for my voiceover mic at the moment. Um, all we do is we configure it to be Dante input one and two, or three and four, or five and six, or seven and eight, depending on how we want to line things up. Very, very straightforward. We can then go over into Pro Tools and map our inputs and outputs accordingly. So kick in, kick out, Snare top, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, playback. It's quite straightforward. You do have to be a bit fastidious about the numbers and the routings and things like that. But once it's up and running, save it and you are good to go. I'm not going to do a direct comparison between the converters of the Orion and the Tascam. That's silly. That's not what this is about. This is a review of the Tascam. And to be quite honest, it sounds awesome. It just sounds really, really good. I can't say whether it sounds better or worse because quite frankly, my room is far from perfect. The setup was straightforward, if not at 
sometimes a little bit weird with the whole Dante thing going on. The nice thing now, of course, would be that I don't have to pay out extortionate amounts of money to get my audio interface hardware well away from the console and from 32D. It's a case of just running a Cat5 or Cat6 cable however far you need it to run. Uh, I think the limit is 500 meters at the moment, but without buffers and extra goodies. But you'd have to confirm that with someone who knows significantly more about Dante than I. But certainly, it was a very straightforward process to set up. The sound quality is excellent. And Dante and AOIP are the future. Ignore them at your peril. So, of course, to the track. There's always a track. It's the law. Uh, simple one this time. Drums, 12 channels of drums, uh, bass and guitar, just a kind of Gary Moore kind of romp thing. Had a bit of fun. Um, and it sounds great. The EQ and effects are being done by the console and my selection of outboard goodies. But that's not really the point here. It's all about listening to the converters. And actually, they sound awesome. And there's 32 of them in one rack space. That has to be worth shouting about. So enjoy the track. My name's James Ivy, and I'll see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk.